you should all have that Google form that's pulled up, which is going to have, uh, yeah, if you are doing this at home, go ahead and set yourself up wherever you want to be today to do this activity. So if you have your kitchen space, perfect. Um, I've kind of set up a space here with my setup. All right, so I can hear from a lot of background that people are listening to other stuff in the background. If you guys could please make sure that you're focused now on our science class, we're starting here. I'm gonna give one more minute for people to get logged in. I'm recording this lab today, so that means that if for some reason you're not sure about an answer to one of the questions in the post lab, I will post this on YouTube and attach that on Google Classroom so that you could go back and watch today from what we did together to answer your questions. But this is our, our class today is doing this lab today called Sweet Fossils. So we're gonna be using sugar cubes today to represent uh, dead organisms. And then we're gonna be using Play-Doh is what I'm using, or you can use any other kind of modeling clay uh, to act as sediment that would be in the preservation or fossilization process. So we're basically gonna be modeling three different things that can happen when an organism dies. That organism, again, is represented by a sugar cube, and then the sediment today is represented by Play-Doh. All right, I got my three beakers here. Um, normally, when we do this lab at school, uh, there's a couple ways that we would be able to keep our constants in the experiment. Uh, so again, today's an experiment. Our independent variable today is going to be uh, the thing that we're directly changing is the independent variable. So we are going to be uh, manipulating how the sugar cube is exposed to water. So that's our independent variable. Our dependent variable is going to be what happens to our sugar cube after we stir for two minutes. Okay. So in other words, your sugar cube today is representing a dying organism or a dead organism. All right. And then with our Play-Doh, we're going to use the Play-Doh to encase or cover partially, if not all of the sugar cube acting as sediment that would quickly cover an organism that's died. Yeah. Uh, and then we're going to put our sugar cubes with Play-Doh into our three beakers uh, using warm water. And of course, in an experiment, we've talked about constants in the experiment. Those are the things we want to keep the same. So notice I've got the same size beakers that I'm going to be using. I'm going to make sure using the markings on my beaker, uh, I'm going to be using those markings today to ensure that the same amount of water is in, e is in each beaker. Uh, my sugar cubes, of course, are all the same size. That's why I use sugar cubes. Many of you at home, uh, it's okay if you can't do it at home. It's just if you are, I was asking you guys to get your stuff together so you can do this live with me as we do it, um, but it's perfectly fine if you can't do this at home. All right, uh, back to the sugar cube. Remember, constants. Our sugar cubes are the same size, okay? What happens to sugar when we put sugar in water? If someone can raise their hand. What happens when you put sugar in water? Yes. All right, Miles, go ahead. What happens when you put sugar in water? It, like, dissolve. Excellent. Yes, very good. Um, so when we talk about, nice job, all right? So yes, when we put sugar in water, it dissolves. Remember that the hotter the water is, the faster the reaction will occur as well. Uh, so we're using warm water today. Again, we're using the water from the same container. I put mine in the microwave to warm it up a little bit. Uh, you don't need to use hot, warm is fine. Okay, but yes, yeah, sugar dissolves in water, okay? Uh, so I want everyone at this point to head over to their Google form. I'm gonna share mine here. All right, and our Google form, we've got a couple of people that are joining late. All right, so for our Google form, you should be able to see, forgive me for a second. Nope, that's not it. All right, so pulling up your class, you should be able to see that there's a link to a Google form that's going to act as your virtual worksheet today. So if you don't have that pulled up, please have that pulled up now. All right, so this should have been the most recent thing I've posted. All right, so here it is. All right, for our Google form, here it is.
Bear with me, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, here we go. So for our Google form, this is what we all should see. It says sweet fossils. Fossils are the remains or traces of once living things. Most fossils form when living things die and are quickly buried by sediment. In this activity today, you will be making observations about how fossils of the soft parts of organisms form. Uh, and the first things first for today, you are going to make a hypothesis. But I want to make sure I'm clear on what the procedure is. So everybody right now should be able to see my shared screen of the Google form. Okay, and you guys should all be on this as well at home. And while I'm going over this, you can be filling in your answers. But let's go over this procedure again together for how we're going to set up our sugar cubes today to model different types of fossils. Okay. I want to uh, remind you guys, it's not optional to complete the assignment, meaning you're still going to write your answers to this lab, but it's optional whether you're doing this at home. So for the rest of you, it sounds like the majority of you are just watching me do this today, which is perfectly fine. You're going to just write your answers as we go through this together, like we're doing this together in the classroom. Okay. All right. So this is how we are going to uh, set this up. All right. So for our procedure, everyone should have that pulled up. Again, for our materials today, we're using sugar cubes or your homemade sugar cubes, which should be of the same size. You have your three different beakers. Normally, you could be putting this all in one bowl, is what the procedure says, but just to kind of make this visual a little bit clearer to you guys, so you could see more so what was happening to the Play-Doh since you're not here in person to see it. I decided to split it up into three beakers just to give it, make it a little bit clearer what's happening with each of the different examples. Okay, uh, so... We're using warm water again because just like Miles said, sugar dissolves in water and the warmer the water is, the faster it will dissolve. We're using the same temperature for all three beakers. Um, and then finally, we're gonna use a spoon here to mix our water, right? Because the more that we can mix the water, the more of the molecules are introduced to the sugar, which means it can continue dissolving them. Okay, so for our procedure, it says we are going to not warp, but wrap a piece of modeling clay around one sugar cube so that half of it is covered with clay. So for one of our sugar cubes, we're going to have half of it covered. So I'm gonna start setting this up here. So I'm gonna take a sugar cube, I'm gonna place it in my Play-Doh and I'm gonna cover it so that half of my sugar cube is still exposed. All right, and because it's Play-Doh or modeling clay that you're using at home, I'm just gonna press on the edges so that Half of my sugar cube is still exposed, but the other half, or a little more than half, is totally covered in Play-Doh, okay? So half is covered, right, half is exposed. All right, next one, we're going to wrap another piece of clay entirely in Play-Doh. So for this next sugar cube, I'm gonna completely cover it in Play-Doh and press my Play-Doh to seal out the edges of my sugar cube. So I'm gonna flatten out my Play-Doh into like a little, doughy piece here, put my sugar cube in, wrap it around completely. All right, and then if you're doing this at home, you'll probably see if you don't use enough Play-Doh, you'll be able to see parts where your sugar cube will peek out. Just add some more Play-Doh so that you can't see your sugar cube at all. And it's completely encased in your Play-Doh. All right, so inspect. No sugar cube is exposed, completely covered in Play-Doh. All right. And then my last sugar cube, it says, um, it says we're going to drop both cubes into the bowl of water along with the third uncovered. So again, one sugar cube we're leaving today uncovered. We're not doing anything to it. Okay. So I've got my half covered. I've got my fully covered. And then I've got nada, zilch, nothing. Right. So I've got one I'm not going to do anything to. I'm just going to expose it to the elements without any protection from our sediment. Okay. It says then what we're going to do is we're going to drop our cubes into our water and we're going to stir the water with our spoon until our uncovered sugar cube is completely dissolved. So our indicator here is that the uncovered sugar cube, once that one's totally dissolved in our water today, and we're going to take our spoon and we're going to take out our Play-Doh and what's left of our other sugar cubes and see what happens. Okay. So this lab is modeling what happens to stuff when it dies, right? And again, we've got one that's half covered in sediment. We've got one that's completely covered in sediment. And then we will have one that is not covered in sediment. For your hypothesis here, it says, what do you expect to happen to each sugar cube? So I want you to develop a hypothesis before we do this. What do you think is going to happen to the one that is half covered? What do you think is going to happen to the one that's completely covered? 
And what do you think is going to happen to this one? That is uncovered. All right, obviously, I just walked you through the procedure, so now you know exactly what we're going to do. So your hypothesis should be, for each sugar cube, what do you think is going to happen? All right, so you guys, right now, I'm going to give you a second or a minute or so to write your answer in for a hypothesis. Remember, in science, we make hypotheses because we're trying to think logically about what we expect the outcome of our experiment to be, right? We were curious. We set out asking a question today. Uh, we're modeling here what happens to life on Earth when it dies, right? Uh, in our experiment, again, our independent variable today is coverage of the, of the sugar cube, right? So they're all being exposed to the same type of elements. They're all going to go into warm water. They're all going to be stirred. Right, but the difference that we controlled here, meaning our, our independent variable, was how much the sugar cube was covered in sediment. Right, so not at all, completely, and half. Okay, so those are independent. We did that. Okay, our dependent variable today is going to be what happens to the sugar cube as a result of, of the coverage of the sugar cube with Play Doh. All right, so your hypothesis should be what do you expect to happen to these sugar cubes based on what we've done to them? Okay. All right, so go ahead and write your hypothesis. And if you want to kind of help me know that when we're ready, tell me when you are finished in the chat. So once you've written a hypothesis for what you expect to happen. Okay. All right, so most of us are saying we're done. All right, what I'm gonna do is while we're finishing up, I'm gonna start prepping my beakers. Again, my hope here was that by doing it this way, you guys could kind of see a little bit more of what was going on rather than having them all jumbling around in one bowl. Okay, so I'm gonna use my markings on the beakers to measure out my water, because of course in the experiment, I want to keep everything else the same. So I'm doing about 200 milliliters in each one, which I measured out, I knew would be enough to cover my sugar cube. Okay. All right, so I've got my three beakers. And I've got my three sugar cubes. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and throw them in. Remember that normally we'd be doing this in one bowl. So I'm gonna do the best I can to try to do everything in the beakers the same. So I'm just gonna rotate between all three to keep them stirred. And again, my hope was this way that with vi the visual, you'd kind of have a better view of what's going on. All right, and are you ready? All right, so as much as possible, I'm gonna drop these all in at the same time. Ready? Set, go. All right, so I'm just gonna stir a little bit in each one. Now, if you're doing this at home, your Play-Doh is not probably gonna do well after this, so this might be your, your one Play-Doh here. Now, I want you to kinda hopefully be able to see here, I've got my exposed sugar cube here, which is dissolving. I've got my one that's totally covered in the middle. And then one on the side here, hopefully you can see that there's some sugar collecting on the bottom, showing that our sugar is dissolving. Got my middle one here. It's getting cloudy for that middle one because, of course, that Play-Doh is starting to react with the water too. My far one over here is, you can see, nice, it's working out well. You can see there's still a little bit left on the bottom, so it's not totally dissolved yet. And that's my indicator for this lab is once the sugar over here in my bar container is totally dissolved, then we will stop and take them out. Almost done. All right, if you can see from the video, this one had our sugar cube in it that was exposed and this is pretty much done. So I'm gonna go ahead and take them out now. 
course, there's nothing to take out of that one now. I'm going to take out our one that was covered. And then I'm going to take out our one that was uncovered. All right. Cool. All right, so for our next step of the procedure, um, we were supposed to now remove the clay and examine what's left. So I'm gonna blot them dry a little bit on my towel here so we can see what we've got to work with. Ew, wet Play-Doh, this is gross. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna start all the way over here with our half covered cube. Gross. All right, so if you look here, we have nothing left, but not necessarily, right? There's the shape left behind. So yesterday we had learned about this different types of fossils, and we learned about uh, molds and cast fossils. So if you take a look up here on my screen, you should be able to see. Yes. Okay, so on my screen here, you see our different types of fossils. And this one would definitely be a mold, right? So a mold is when you have the shape left behind. So from yesterday, I had talked about how um, if we're pretending this was the whole organism, so someone said trace fossil, and I, I understand why you would think that. But remember, this isn't really like a footprint because if we were pretending that our sugar cube was a whole organism, we got the whole imprint of their body pretty much, right? So this would be considered a mold fossil. Again, you can remember that when you go to the dentist, for those of you that have braces, when they're going to design uh, your brackets or your braces and kind of how they're gonna help to align your teeth, they, have, they take a mold of your teeth. So they have you bite into this gross tray with a bunch of plaster, and it's safe, of course, for you, but when you take your mouth away, it gives an imprint, right? So a mold is an imprint. So I would say this first one definitely is a mold fossil. All right, and now, we know that, of course, the one that was totally covered got completely dissolved. But then this middle one, this is really where we have fun with our hypothesis. All right, so for this middle one, let's see what's left. So I'm gonna use my spoon, open this. Oh, shoot. There it is, right? And I know you can't be here to see it, but it's completely intact. All right, so I did a pretty good job of really making sure that it was completely sealed, right? So I used a lot of sediment there to completely encase it or all my Play-Doh, a big glob of Play-Doh to make sure that water couldn't seep in. Okay, so our middle one, if we go back to what type of fossil our middle one is, I mean, again, this hasn't been 10,000 years, it's been like a couple minutes, so, uh, for right now, it would definitely count for our last one as preserved remains, I would say, because why? Because the actual tissue, if we're pretending this is an organism, the actual thing is still here. Now, if we're being realistic to what would happen after like 10,000 years, do we think the sugar would still be left in there? No, it would probably be mineralized, maybe to make a petrified fossil, right? Other stuff seeping in and hardening it in its place. Um, but as of this moment, it would technically fit in the category of preserved remains. All right, so back to our follow-up questions of our lab today. Oh, sorry, and the most important thing, I had nothing left in my third beaker. So the one that I didn't cover in Play-Doh, there, there it is, can you see it? No, right? So when you think about the one that was uncovered, think that is most of the life on this planet. Most of the life on this planet, when it dies, you got nothing left, right? Because we have an ecosystem, right? We've got the food web. We've got, you know, decomposers like earthworms and scavengers, right? That are constantly breaking down and decaying organisms. So when it comes to our uncovered sugar cube, think that's most life on this planet when it dies. Most of the time we don't get left with anything in the form of a fossil, right? The other two examples are more rare. And the reason now hopefully is very clear why they're rare. You have to have your perfect combination of events take place. You have to have sediment quickly cover the organism when it dies. It has to be blocked off. In this case, having this perfect preservation was only because the sediment was tightly packed, right? 
and no oxygen, right? In this example, right? Be thinking like that's like no water getting in would be like no oxygen getting in, right? Uh, in order for that organism to be protected. So you have to have everything happen perfectly in order for a fossil to be preserved. Most of the time, it doesn't get preserved. So your uncovered sugar cube is like 99.999% of anything that's ever been living on this earth, uncovered sugar cube, right? Fossils, while it feels like there's a lot of them, right? If you think about how many animals have ever lived on the planet in 4.6 billion years, that's not a lot, right? Okay, so on to our follow-up question. So it says, describe the appearance of the two sugar cubes that were left. Okay, so that question was specifically tying to the ones that we had Plato with. All right, so you should obviously answer that question just describing the one that was totally covered in this case because Miss Ryan sealed the edges well, no leaking in, right? You had one that was totally preserved and would be considered or comparable to preserved remains. You had one that was half covered, which left a complete imprint of the shape, which we would consider to be a mold fossil or mold uh, fossil category. The next question says, what effect did the clay have on the sugar? Well, our clay here was, was, was representing sediment, right? So the Play-Doh clearly protected and preserved the sugar cube. Even in the one example where our sugar cube was dissolved, the Play-Doh still preserved the shape, right? Which is important, right? And a lot of times I'd argue this is usually what you get left with, something that's not a complete uh, part of the organism, our trace fossils, but our body fossils are oftentimes not complete either. Um, there is an example of a dinosaur, and I'm gonna pull this up. There is an example of a dinosaur. It was one of the large herbivores, and we actually got, we didn't have a head for a while when they were finding these fossils on Earth. So scientists from around the world would collaborate per usual, right? Try to figure out, hey, what, you know, what's the deal here? What is this thing? What should it look like? And what ended up happening was, Yes, as the brontosaurus. So for the brontosaurus, um, we didn't have, it was actually a sauropod. We didn't have the right head. So for a long time, um, paleontologists and archaeologists were saying that uh, this is what the brontosaurus should look like, but we had never found a head as part of the fossils that were found in the brontosaurus. So they kind of used what that body type looked like with other dinosaur heads and kind of put another dinosaur's head on it and was like it probably looked something like that um and they had it wrong for quite some time until someone unearthed a complete uh brontosaurus so we realized that it actually was was not the same thing at all so i wanted to share that i'll i'll share more about that on another time um okay so i have a couple questions coming in for people that are working on it which is great uh so one question here says, how does the activity model how fossils of soft parts of organisms form? So that question, what I'm asking you is think about the soft parts, the body tissue, right? So if you touch your own body, right, your arms, right, the outer layer is soft tissue, okay? Um, the parts of an organism that usually most easily fossilize are bones. Right? And the question I'm asking is, how does this activity model how fossils of soft parts of organisms form? And this is your example. Okay, so having that shape of the body, right, allows us to know, even after 10,000 years or millions of years, right, what its tissue mass was like. Okay, so if you have a skeleton of a T-Rex, you just have the bones, right? How do we know what their tissue mass was like? How do we know that they had skinny little arms? How do we not know that they had like super buff, you know, biceps on those tiny little arms, right? And the answer is having these mold fossils or these cast fossils of these types of organisms help us see what the soft parts would look like. All right, I'm sorry if I didn't make that clear. And then the last question here says, which cube represented what happens to most evidence on light or for life on earth when it dies? And the answer is your uncovered sugar cube. You got to think that 75% of the world is covered in ocean. We only have 25% that's landmass, right? So think most of the ocean, most of the world has fossils of stuff that we've never seen. The only fossils that you and I or any other scientist has been able to reach mostly are those that are on land. I'm not saying that 
we've never found or been able to get a fossil that's washed up on shore from the ocean? Absolutely. We also have places, as you know, like the desert in Southwest United States, meaning the Grand Canyon. We know that area was once covered in ocean and we have fossils there. But think about the majority of our surface has clues of our past that we don't have access to. Maybe one day, but as of now, most of our, our fossil record is all that we have available to us, which is the 25% of our surface. I will attach this article for you about the story of the Brontosaurus as well on Google Classroom. All right, well, that is what I have for today. Um, I wanted to chat about a couple other announcements. Uh, tomorrow, we're gonna be doing a lab with cookies. You're gonna be modeling how we excavate or how archeologists are able to unearth fossils. Uh, it's kind of like a fun higher level middle school twist on it where uh, we'll see who can be the most successful in regards to how much money they'll make for properly preserved unearthed fossils, not breaking the ground and doing other things like that. To participate in the lab tomorrow, all you need is a cookie. A uh, chocolate chip cookie would be great, but if you've got like cinnamon raisin, That'll work too. Um, and basically what you guys will be doing is you would have to take pictures to participate in this tomorrow with the cookie at home. And you're gonna be using a toothpick. If you don't have a toothpick, you could use like any other sharp point, like um, careful of course, but you could use like, um, if you have like a skewer to make kebabs, uh, something like that, but you need a sharp point, uh, like a chisel to dig out your different pieces of chocolate chip from your cookie. And then we're gonna talk about some very realistic or uh, things that scientists have to worry about when they are unearthing fossils. Important things like not destroying people's properties to try to dig these things up or how much money is it worth to unearth a fossil if it means that we have to pay out a family for their home. There's a lot of interesting things when it comes to archeological dig sites. All right, um, so I'm gonna attach that uh, reading about the brontosaurus. I'd like you all to check that out today, but otherwise, once you complete and submit your Google form, that's it for today. Um, again, tomorrow, I hope you guys can participate at home with any kind of cookie. Chocolate, chocolate chip would be recommended, but if you have something else you can work with, we're gonna talk about how archeologists and scientists have to be very cautious, patient, and um, aware when they are, are digging up fossils, so, okay. Uh, Kaylee has her hand raised. I'm going to unmute you. Yes, Kaylee. Um, can I use sugar cookies? The, the idea is you're digging something out of the cookie. So, for example, chocolate chip cookie, you're going to be digging out the chocolate chips. You're using cinnamon raisin, you're going to be digging out the raisin. So, sugar cookie would be fine if there's something to take out of it. So, if it had like, so no, sugar cookies sprinkles? sometimes have other stuff. Huh? Sprinkles or something. Are the sprinkles in it or on top? In it. in it? If they're in it, that might work. Yeah. Cool. Other questions? Anybody else? All right, everybody, that is it for today. I'm going to attach that article for you on Google Classroom about the brontosaurus. I'd like you all to check that out. We don't always get it right, but again, if we don't have a complete fossil for a long time, we've got to use what we know from other sources to figure it out. Okay. All right, that's it for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow for our excavation of a cookie. All right, bye guys. I'll hang out just in case anyone has a question. All right, thanks everybody.